We just finished reading Superdog, The Heart of a Hero, written by Carolyn Buner and illustrated by Mark Buner. And now we are going to draw Superdog. So this is a great picture of him. He looks so nice and heroic, so we are going to use that as our inspiration. So I'm going to put it down here so you can see it while we're drawing. If you'll notice, he is tall and slender, so we are going to put our paper down and use it portrait style, tall and slender, because he'll fit nicely. Remember when you're doing your guidelines to draw lightly, because you can always darken in later. I'm going to draw dark so that you can see it. And when you're drawing him, you don't want him to be so tiny that it's hard to get all the details in, but you do want to make sure he fits on the page, that he doesn't roll, run off the edges. So I'm thinking he'll be about, about that big. Most of his height is taken up with his long body because he is a dachshund, a wiener dog. So we're gonna leave enough space for his head and shoulders, but we'll start his body about here. And if you look at it, it's actually shaped a lot like the number seven. So kind of a skinnier seven, not with a huge top, but a little bit of a curve to it with enough room for his head above. And then coming down, there's a little bit of a curve to it too. So we're gonna swoop down, a little bit curved, and then put a little line down here. And that gives us a nice base for his body. The next thing we're gonna do is place the top of his cape. It's basically like a half of an oval. It doesn't start right on the corner, it moves in just a little bit but you kind of just put a half of an oval up there as a guideline, maybe a little closer to the edge, there you go. And if you look at him, he's standing a little bit at an angle. He's a little diagonal to us. So even though you know that this D goes right in the middle of his chest, if you look at the drawing, it's a little to the right. So we're going to, not in the middle of the seven, but a little to the right, give ourselves a center line. Again, you're gonna do it real light because you're gonna want to erase it, but that helps us figure out where everything goes. So where his cape attaches in the front, there's a little V and it goes right in the middle. So we're gonna go like this. And that kind of gives us an idea where that's gonna go. And then we're gonna give him some necklines. They're gonna angle a little towards each other. So up here and up there. And then his head is actually an oval. So a little bit sideways oval. So not a perfect circle, a little bit of an oval. So on top of his neck, we're gonna draw an oval. It's not a very even oval, but that's okay. It's just a guideline. And his nose is pretty high up on his head, so not way down here. Pretty near the top, kind of where you just start curving down on the oval. So go out there, and it comes back to the bottom of the oval. So those are some great guidelines as to how we're going to draw his head and shoulders. So now I'm going to erase this, but leave it so I can see it. If your guidelines are super light, you might not even have to erase because when you're drawing, it might just cover it up. But mine are so dark. You should still be able to see them. I can still see them, um, but now they're not gonna be in the way. So his cape folds. It's almost like drawing a flower where it's wider on this side and it gets narrower as it goes in, kind of like a slice of pizza. So you come up, make a little bump, come back in. There's three of them, two, three. And on the other side, same thing. You're going to come up, a little wider on the top, narrower as it goes in. One, two, three. Now you can see his shoulder here is actually going to cover this corner up. So you don't want that line to be super dark because you are going to be drawing over it and erasing it. But we are not there right now. We're still working on his upper part. So let's put his neckline in. And let's start drawing the top of his head. So to the right, kind of where the oval started going down, that's where we start the top of his head. And we're gonna come up and around. And where we started his nose across, he's got a little bit of a bump, so it's a little bit of an up. So we'll go a little up and then down. And then we're gonna come back around with the line we drew and join it to the neck. Now part of the back of his head is covered up by his ear, which starts out off his head. So we need to start the ear out here, and then it goes kind of diagonally and down, curves back and goes back to his head, and then you just add his neckline there. And he's got another ear, but it's on the other side of his body, so you just kind of put it there so you can tell it's there. 
I think his ear's a little bit longer, so I'm going to add that in. Okay. His nose is really big, but it doesn't just fit on here. It actually goes beyond the boundaries of the nose we drew, so he has a big black nose. He's got a nice smile. If you follow this line just down a little bit, you can add a nice smile for him. And his eyes are pretty high up on his head, kind of centered this way. And it's almost like drawing a little moon. And then he's got an eyelid that if you put a really light line in, you can tell his eyelid is there. And he's got eyebrows that are floating above his head. There's one over this eye. And there's one for the eye that we can't see. There we go. So that's pretty good. Now let's get the rest of his body in. So he's very strong in the chest and then he gets nice and narrow. So wide here and then he gets really narrow with a swoopy line. So we're just going to rough in a swoopy line here. That's pretty good. And now let's work on his muscly arm here. So we're going to use some circles to help us draw in his muscly arm. You are going to be erasing some of it, so don't draw it real dark. So on this corner, we're going to make a circle. And then next to it, actually kind of more of an oval. And then this one, this part, it's almost like a teardrop but it doesn't go completely closed on this end. So kind of like a turkey leg. So out and around, back in again. And a line and a little circle down there. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to make that into a muscly arm. So I'm going to erase some of the lines because some of them we're going to use and some we're going to change a little bit. For the top part of his arm, we're going to lead in from over here and draw in our first circle till it ran into the oval. Now from the oval to the turkey leg, we're not going to go bump, bump. We're just going to make that all one thing. Then we're going to go ahead and put the turkey leg back in because we like that. For the other part of his arm, the under part, this circle is going to dominate, or this oval. So we're going to go all the way up like that. And then we're going to just bring his side out to there. And that's it. That's his muscly arm. His other arm is mostly hidden. We want to round this corner out a little bit and a little bit below it. We're just going to come out, back in, put a little line here, and just a little hint of his other hand. So that's pretty good. For his waistband, it's below the middle of him. So here's the middle of him. We're going to go a little farther down and it's just slightly curved up. And we're going to do another one just below it. We're going to put his buckle not in the middle. We're going to move it a little to the right because that's where his center is. And for his chest plate, it's kind of like a curved V. So we'll start over here and go down and then go out. Notice it's not in the middle. It's to the right. We're going to come up and back down. And he's got a big capital D that's a, going a little bit diagonal inside it and the gold part inside is just a triangle. So there we go. There's his big D. His legs, we're going to start out with some ovals that are going to go in his corners of his body. So there's one. Maybe it should be a little bigger. And the other one going to be just the same. And there's going to be two diagonal lines going down and to the right. And on his other leg, the same thing. Put a line at the bottom and a little circle at the bottom for his feet. And let's give him a background to be standing on, right? We don't want him floating in space. So he's standing up now. And we need to put the rest of his cape. So we've got the top part up here and now it's billowing in the wind. So it's all wavy. So starting inside of his elbow, We'll put his cape. This side starts a little bit below his hand. And then there's just kind of a wavy bottom. And there is Super Dog. Now, if you want to make it a little more realistic, there's quite a few shadows in this drawing. And it looks like the sun's up here shining down this way. So these parts are light, and then the lower parts are dark. There's a big shadow here you can see. So if you, if you want to add shadows, you can just take your pencil, and lightly add the shadows. 
There's one under his chin. Kind of shows the curve of his face and underneath his nose. There's also even one on his neck over here. You can tell the bottom parts of his cape top are shadowed. And this whole side of his body is in shadow, even under his arm, under his muscle here. So that part is in shadow. On his legs, I didn't ever clean those up, and I should have, and I didn't put his tail on yet. So let's put his legs on. And add his tail. There's a shadow underneath his tail and on the left side of his legs and feet. So you can see he starts looking a little bit more three-dimensional when you put the shadows. The bottom part of this arm is in shadow and underneath this muscle is really dark. There's some shadows at the edge of his hand in here and even at the kind of bottom part of his ear. It's a little bit shadowy and his back ear is completely in shadow. So now he looks a little bit more realistic with his shadows added. There's some down here too. Okay. Now if you wanted to color him in, there's only a few colors you need. You need red for his uniform, orange, brown for him, and then you might use a light green and a dark green for his cape. You don't have to color it in, but if you want to, you might want to see what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and color him in. Um, I'm also going to outline him in pen, but if you're going to do that, make sure you have some scratch paper underneath them because the pen seeps through. But I'll time lapse it so you don't have to watch and wait for the whole time that it takes to color him in. So here you go.